polio is a horrible disease. I cannot move. Period. For a lot of humanity knows nothing about polio. They don't even know what it is. Paul Alexander is a polio survivor who spends nearly all day, every day, inside his iron lung at home in Dallas, Texas. The disease paralyzed Paul from the neck down, so the machine helps him breathe by using negative pressure to force his body to take in air. He was only six years old when he caught polio in 1952, one of the worst outbreak years in U.S. history. When I first tracked the polio, uh, I was just a kid like everybody else, but it came to feel a little bit uh, ill. When mom saw my face, she knew. She put me immediately to bed. Over the next five days, I lost everything. Couldn't move, couldn't walk, and finally, the last day, I couldn't breathe. My diaphragm was gone. Destroyed. Like, my muscles were gone, destroyed, which left me in the yard long for the rest of my life. Parents were so afraid of the mysterious, deadly disease that they kept their children from playing with others. Pools, theaters, camps, even schools shut down. Everybody was petrified with the concept of polio. It, it kind of dominated the summer. And parents were freaked out that the kid even got the sniffles. But just a few months after Paul contracted the disease, Jonas Salk discovered a vaccine for polio. Today, Paul is one of the last living polio survivors who has such a bad case of paralysis that he still relies on a relic of that dark time. He can leave the device only for a few hours at a time with tremendous difficulty. He relies on his longtime caretaker to do just about anything that he can't do with his own mouth. By breathing out of the arm, it's voluntary. I have to think about it and work at it so I get tired. After a while, and I'll go back to rest. But the iron lung hasn't stopped Paul from living a full life. He went to law school, passed the bar exam, and started his own practice. I've had literally thousands of clients, you know, worry about the iron lung. They come into my office, they say, what is that? And I tell them what it is. Okay. My God, if you can handle that, you can find your way to this point. Okay. One crack of a lawyer. Okay. I've had nobody turn me down. The last iron lung was manufactured about half a century ago. So Paul has struggled to find people who know how to repair the antique. He became so desperate for help, his friend posted a YouTube video of Paul explaining that his iron lung was falling apart in hopes that a machinist who knew how to help would see it. But it wasn't until he met local mechanical engineer Brady Richards two years ago that Paul was able to stop worrying about his iron lung. This is the instructions for the day. So that's how we determine how it's supposed to work. Brady refurbished the machine in a garage where he also works on hot rods and race cars. This is the one Paul was originally in. It's getting worn out. It's leaking really bad and doesn't produce enough pressure. So that's why we, we took him out of this one and put him in the restored one. The biggest challenge really was the lack of parts. It wasn't the big parts, it's the small parts. Nobody's got them, so we have to make them ourselves. My life would be down the tubes if it wasn't for him, because I looked for years to find someone to do how to work on our work. We are barely a generation past one of our country's most frightening epidemics so close that some of its victims are still living in the archaic machines of that era. But for many, it's a forgotten history. Polio is still a major concern in some developing countries. 
Some experts say it's possible a new polio epidemic could happen in the U.S. as more and more parents are opting out of immunizing their children. The my worst thought is that polio should come back. If there's children in Afghanistan or Pakistan or Nigeria or polio is still happening, somebody carrying the virus would come to America and and just in fact, one child. It only takes one child in life. And there's going to be another epidemic. This is a polio that it's not a fun trip. It's real. Paul just finished writing a memoir using only his mouth. He hopes it will help people understand what it's like to live with polio and why we must continue the fight to eradicate it globally. I've always been an inquisitive person. My parents taught me to be, to use my intelligence and my energy to be productive. I have never thought of myself as a cripple. That's the word I choose to use because I think it covers them from crowd of most people's perceptions. I'm not disabled, I'm not uh, handicapped, and I'm not limited, and I'm crippled, at least in most people's minds, except mine. I've experienced everything in life that you have and more. I'm Paul Alexander, human being.